How's everybody doing? Sorry. How's everybody doing? So I am Mindy's partner, and uh, we're Petrelli Prevatera, and we are in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, uh, Maryland, D.C., um, Texas, Colorado, and Washington right now. So we do divorces across a large uh, swath of the uh, country. So I want to tell you guys a story about the what if in the future for a divorce. So this will be a story about a Bitcoin millionaire or billionaire who comes into my office to get divorced. So I want to tell you a story about Jack and Diane. Jack and Diane met in the metaverse. Um, they didn't meet in real life, they met, on, met in the metaverse, and they decided that they liked each other, they bought real estate in the metaverse, they bought NFTs and artwork in the metaverse, um, they got married in the metaverse, and they recorded their marriage certificate on the blockchain, they had a prenuptial agreement also for whatever they had pre-existing that they recorded in the blockchain, and now, Diane realizes that Jack's an asshole, and he's an asshole in real life, because what she finds out is he's been investing their marital assets elsewhere. And what he's been doing is he had his own private wallets, and he's been investing their hard-earned money that they've made in the metaverse into whatever he's been doing. So she comes into my office, and she's asking for options. And she's like, what, what can I do? Like, I, I know he has this money. He was bragging about it at a barbecue. Um, he was telling my brother-in-law that, you know, he's invested $10,000 and now it's worth $2.2 million. I have no idea what he's talking about. I thought maybe he was just bullshitting. And it turns out we have to figure out a way to track that. So what happens when your spouse is untruthful? So as lawyers, we have all different ways to do discovery. We have interrogatories and we have notice production, produced documents, things I'm not gonna bore you with. But what I wanna talk to you about is what I have, would have to talk to her about, which is there are many different ways you can actually hide your money, especially crypto. And as divorce attorneys, this is going to be the number one problem that we have in the future is trying to track down how this is gonna happen. So. There's websites like Local Bitcoin, and there's ATMs where you can Bitcoin ATMs where you can go and withdraw actual cash, and you can make that exchange, and that's one way people can abscond with 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 you know marital assets. Another thing they can do is they can record, they can create fake email addresses, and they can create aliases um, based off of burner phones and different types of uh, you know fake SIM cards. To, so they have all different ways that they're unscrupulous that they can actually fake these accounts. And when they fake these accounts, it makes it very, very difficult for any forensic expert to go and actually trace these things. So one of the issues is there really are no forensic experts out there that can trace anything unless it's actually made on an exchange. Except like everyone knows like exchanges like Coinbase and, and such, we, that, that big US v Coinbase uh, case kind of set the precedent, so anything you do there, they're gonna, if you get, they get subpoenaed, they're gonna turn your information over. But what's, what happens is, when you create these fake accounts, it's impossible to actually trace them. They're almost like anonymous. So, when Jack got a burner phone, and got a burner SIM card, and created that fake telephone number to bypass all the registration they had to do to create his wallets, he was able to usurp the system. The other thing he did is he went to the local CVS and he bought $500 cards, and they were credit cards, and those credit cards were used to in inject the cash into the system. And when he did that, it made it untraceable because you scratch off the code on the cards, you enter that information in, and you can invest the money back into whatever you want, and this is one of the major problems. Um, What, what Gene found out by talking to me is there were some things that he was forthright about. And the things that he'll, he'll be forthright about are easy. We can split coin that's in kind. We can look at people's coin. If you have 100 Bitcoin, we can split that 50-50. We can value that at the date, and the date would be 
we can set it at the date you actually purchased it, if it's uh, going to be disputed, or we can value it at that date and time when she comes into the office and he agrees, um, or we can come up with a different type of valuation, it's whatever the parties agree on. Um, even if you do split them in kind, you still have gas fees and things like that, so it's not going to be a total 50-50 you know, split, it might be close, or it might be an offset, but these are things to watch out for. Now, there's two other ways that people can, like Jack in the situation, really kind of hide his Bitcoin. And one of them, if he's very shrewd, would be something called Bitcoin mixing. So there are websites out there like CoinMix and um, Ultra Mixer, which allows you to actually go and take the coin that you have and you insert it into their system. They give you basically a guarantee of the actual coin that you have and the value it's worth, and they give you someone else's Bitcoin, so that way it's untraceable. Um, and when that happens, it is absolutely impossible for a forensic or anyone to trace that, that Bitcoin. And when that's done in combination to the things I mentioned before, you've got a situation where, as divorce attorneys, we, we, we think it's there, but we have no way to prove it. So, what do you do in a situation where there's Bitcoin or any type of cryptocurrency and we can't trace it? Well, that lies the problem for us divorce attorneys. There's nothing we can do. We'd have to look through bank records and credit card statements and try to see if there's something that's, that can source back to the beginning to say, hey, this person took marital funds and they put it into whatever they did for the cryptocurrency. So, another way that Jack was able to hide marital assets and abscond with them, is he brought bought private coins. There's a bunch of private coins out there that are growing in popularity. Some of the ones that are well known um, are Zcash and another one named Monero. They're completely anonymous coins. They don't, they, you can't trace them, you can't track them. And it makes it very easy for people to do this. So in the old days, People would hide their, their cash and their assets by stuffing the mattress in the mattresses. I had a case in South Philadelphia one time, early in my career, where uh, they actually, the, the guy had a pizza shop and he was loading his walls in the basement with, with hard cash and the spouse you know, found out after he moved out and, uh, and we did, she tore down the walls in the basement and found hundreds of thousands of dollars of cash. So people tr you know, try really hard to hide assets, and it's going to be a problem that's going to continue into the future. Thank you. Sure. All of these accounts, all of these wallets have Shiba Inu, have Bitcoin, have all ETH, have everything. You know this because you're their, you're their spouse. Isn't there a way where you can, like, not mediation, but in court, say, look, I know he has all of these accounts. Where, where did it go? So your question is, what do you do when you know your account, your spouse has these accounts? Like, how do you prove it? Yeah. So if it's an exchange, you can subpoena the exchanges and you okay. can get that information. If it's not on the exchange, then you need to have a witness. So most states, you come in as preponderance of the evidence, you have someone to come and testify under oath that they know that this person has these, or he's the person boasted, and that's why I mentioned the barbecue fact, because if someone boasts about the barbecue and they hear it, you bring that person to court, and based upon a preponderance of the evidence, they'll say, well, he had something at that time and was valued at X, so we're gonna hold that person responsible and usually offset it with some other asset if they can't find it. Can you um, subpoena the, pers the person's brother? <laughs> Did you know that he's telling his information to? I know I'm asking a lot of questions, but this is real life. Can you su subpoena the person's brother? So it depends upon where you are. I don't know what I don't know how Michigan. the laws in your, Michigan. I don't know the laws of Michigan. <laughs> That's okay. one of the few places I'm can, not barred. I, um, well, can I still hire you all as a consultant? We could refer you to somebody in Michigan. We have other law offices that we're, we do work okay. with for business. But okay. yeah, I would consult with something, someone in Michigan about that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Well, thank you. So 
I just want to say, let me just say one more thing. So just one more thing on those excellent questions. So these are the benefits of getting a prenup or a postnup because as cryptocurrency becomes more challenging to find or value, one of the benefits of having marital contracts is that you are essentially agreeing in advance outside of the law. So the problem with the law, especially in all 50 states, the law is different in every state. So just like the first question was asked, Tom said, well, what state are you in? Because every state is so different. I cannot stress that enough. So when we're talking about decentralizing, one of the benefits of a smart contract is that you are evening the playing field. You're giving yourself the ability with your spouse when you're happy to come up with a mutual understanding of what you want your assets to be defined as, how you're gonna protect them in the event of separation or divorce. So like I said, nobody wants a divorce, but why not have a mutually agree upon agreement that I believe one day will be able to be recorded on the blockchain. So we will be able to, in the future, have the ability to come up with these smart agreements. We have different terms from them now, but in the future we'll have smart agreements and we'll be able to protect your assets to avoid unfortunate situations like the question that was just asked where people are actually trying to hide and you know, not essentially share in the property. Yeah, and, and this has happened already. So in Nevada, there's been a, they have a sandbox there where businesses and can go and they can test um, different concepts. And in Nevada, they've been recording marriage certificates, deeds for um, real estate, um, driver's licenses, all types of things, birth certificates, to find out you know what the impact is. And, and they've been giving people digital certificates for, for marriage instead of an actual hard copy um, with a QR code that people get to use and they're trying to see what the effect is um, on the system. And, and what's really happening is you're creating a two-tier system. And on one hand, you have you know, the digital side, but you have the government and everything that happens on the government side, which is you know, the real world right now. And it's, it, they're saying, well, that's great, but you still have to go and record it over here. So you have these two parallel worlds that are kind of running side by side, and the question is going to be in the future of which one's going to prevail. Is, you know, is the government finally going to adopt at some point in the court systems? And the court systems are slow. And like, for example, in Philadelphia, we still don't have e-filing, which is crazy for, for family law. And we're like the only county left in like Pennsylvania that doesn't have e-filing. So. When they, if and when they ever adopt um, some of these things, it'll be wonderful because you'll see a lot more efficiency in the system. And the benefit is that smart people, we love working with smart people who want to do smart things to protect their assets. And most courts are going to be light years behind. So for the people in this room who get it, who get what digital assets are, Start researching how to protect your assets through a postnup, a prenup, or what I'm going to call the future of the smart contract, because that's going to be the people who aren't in the wild, wild west, which will be the court that is trying to play catch up. I agree. Thank you. Thank you.